so the unique aspect of metal on metal wear debris particles and the damage caused uh, by them is that they, they cause soft tissue damage. That is damage to the muscle, damage to the capsule, which is the anatomical structure that encloses the, the hip joint and causes damage to, to the connect, connective tissues. So many studies, or a variety of studies, suggest that the soft tissue damage is caused both by direct killing of the tissue, tissue necrosis, uh, that occurs as, as, as a function of the wear debris particles uh, directly uh, being deposited, directly being generated and deposited in the uh, periarticular uh, region and, and causing uh, the death or the tissue death of muscle and capsule uh, as well as connective tissue. Now the other thing that's being uh, seen in, in um, um, metal on metal uh, um, hip implants uh, in some of these uh, patients is the formation of these of these of these pseudo tumors, and so that's a that's a um, uh, so if you will a, macrospot, a macroscopic um, observation that's 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 seen either by imaging studies or at the time of of, of revision, and and you know the the uh, the contribution. Uh, of, of those pseudo tumors as to uh, you know long term uh, health consequences are, are unknown. The expectation is that if you have a poorly functioning implant, that the possibility exists that that poorly functioning implant will con continue to release wear debris, wear debris particles, and will, that will result in increased or could result in increased levels of cobalt and chromium. So, so you know, it's, it, it's hard to answer it in a one-size-fits-all kind of a, uh, you know, context. But, but again, is what, what people should be aware of is that they're, if they're having, whether or not they're having problems with their hip or not, but, but certainly if they're having problems with their hip, that in uh, consultation with their treating physician or with their family doctors, um, you know that they should that they should voice these concerns uh, to those uh, clinicians about you know about uh, the likelihood or the possibility that their cobalt and chromium levels are going to continue to increase. You know, remember that the treating physician uh, on an individual basis has a whole lot more information uh, that that he's that he's making clinic he or she is making clinical decisions on other than. Um, cobalt, uh, uh, systemic cobalt and chromium levels. You know, so you've got the real problem here of, of, uh, of a risk-benefit analysis uh, to determine whether it's clinically indicated to, to uh, have that individual or have that patient undergo yet another revision if, if there's no other evidence that the, that the hip is functioning improperly. There's all sorts of you know, different scenarios that you can that you can envision. You have individuals who uh, are not having any or, or don't seem to be having any pain or any or any problems with, with their hip, nothing that they can uh, that, that, that they can point to to say, you know, I'm really concerned about how my, my hip is functioning. They're, 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 they're coming into this, their concern is being driven that, you know, gee, I'm reading all about uh, that, 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 I, that there could be a problem with elevated cobalt and chromium. And those, those individuals, in, in my mind, need to be uh, evaluated again in consultation uh, with, their, uh, with their clinicians as to, you know, what's clinically indicated here if, if you know, if it's just elevated uh, cobalt and chromium. Again, and, and, and different clinicians seem to be interpreting that information in different ways. And the reason for that, you know, goes back to what I, uh, I said earlier in, in definition of what's a normal cobalt and chromium level, how do occupational studies advise us or inform us as to uh, what the appropriate standards are. Um, there's, no, uh, there's no standards for uh, or no authoritative body uh, that can that that has has come up with an opinion as to what uh, too high of a cobalt or chromium level could be, or what uh, what the consequences of that particular uh, elevated cobalt and chromium could be to a person's uh, long-term health or immediately uh, to the functioning of their their hip. So the, so the the authoritative guidelines are missing. So individual doctors are left are, are really charged with the difficult task 
of interpreting all of this information for themselves, as are, as are their patients. And, 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 and really what I'm trying to do here is, is to provide you with some, some guidance as to uh, uh, how the uncertainty of the science, although there is, although there is some uncertainty in the science, there, there are some, um, there, there are some um, um, things that we uh, can advise people.